Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. Head back through our back catalog and see if there's any videos that you like. But today, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how I prep a vehicle for a road trip. This disgusting beast is my 2017 Jeep Cherokee Limited. It's got all the bells and whistles. It, it's one of those where you might as well have bought the Grand Cherokee because of how much stuff is in here. It's got the nice Uconnect system. It's got all the bells and whistles, like I said, heated seats, leather seats, super nice everything. Again, it's basically a Grand Cherokee, but not a Grand Cherokee. Um, the only reason I did that was because I saved a whole ton of money by getting a regular one instead of the Cherokee. Okay, so what we're doing is we are going to get this thing prepared for a road trip. Now, my wife and I are going on a little bit of a, uh, I'd call it a honeymoon. We've been together 10 years, so we'll just call it a 10-year thing. We never got a honeymoon. Not really a big deal, but we're going to road trip 12 hours to North Carolina from Connecticut, and we are going to enjoy a little bit warmer weather, I guess, and basically redo a trip that we did 10 years ago that we only got to spend like two days in North Carolina. So we're going to spend essentially five and... Uh, Enjoy the sights, probably hit up a bunch of NASCAR stuff because racer things. Do a lot of antiquing, maybe visit friends and family and stuff. And uh, that instead of flying down there, we said, well, why don't we just drive? It's going to take a few hours longer, but we don't have to pay for plane tickets and wait to go through and have all the COVID protocols and all this other stuff that goes on at airports and other nonsense. So we said, and we don't have to rent a car when we get down there, we're going to have one with us. So when it comes to a road trip, you got to make sure that your car is as prepared as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I prepare for road trips, even though I don't really take that many. So here's how we do it. So what I do is, there we go. I don't want to scratch nothing. Don't mind the, uh, weird sound coming from over there if you can hear it that heater makes all sorts of weird horror movie noises as i go in and i pick out the owner's manual and i go in and i figure out the maintenance schedules and stuff and i look for you know stuff like capacities and all sorts of stuff but i think this is like your scheduled maintenance and such uh air cleaners and cabin filters and spark plugs and stuff. God dang, this thing says replace the spark plugs at 100,000 miles. <laughs> Jesus, that ain't happening. So you go through here and you do all your inspection stuff and you figure out, you know, what you need. Like this car has approximately 52,000 miles on it. And so I'm gonna look here and say, all right, in the next 1,500 miles, what do I need? And it says, between 40 and 60, inspect the CV joints. Okay, I'll take a look at that since it's in the air. Inspect the front suspension, inspect brake linings, which I'll probably do because I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna take the wheels off since it's in the air and I'm gonna rotate the tires. I typically rotate the tires every oil change anyway, just to keep them rotated. Uh, I know you probably don't have to, but I do anyway because I do all my own work and I don't care. Um, so, Air cleaner for the engine needs to be done at 60,000. I'm at 52. We're probably going to put 1,500 miles on the car, so we're not going to bother. Um, nothing else looks like it really needs to be done, so I think what we'll do is just my normal checklist. Now, that checklist consists of obviously the normal stuff. Like I said, I'm going to change the oil because it needs it. These cars are kind of funny because they have an oil life percentage that you look up on the dashboard okay so apparently i lied because this thing has fifty-six thousand miles on it so i'll go through and show you vehicle info it's got coolant and transmission and oil temps and all that uh 
the oil life gauge. Okay, it's not reading because the car is not running. So what that oil life gauge does is it tells you what the oil life is in a, in a percentage. And mine is currently at like single digits. I think it's like seven or eight percent. So when you're going to, on a big road trip, you got to take into account how many miles you're actually going to put on the vehicle. So if you're going to put 1500 on it and you're going to go over your mileage for your oil change or something, you might want to change it ahead of time. This thing is very due for an oil change. So I'm going to do it ahead of time. We won't have to worry about it. I'll double check that and we'll, we'll be fine on the whole oil thing. Now, obviously, when you're under the hood doing an oil change, you also want to check all your other fluids just to be safe. I mean, you can see all the salt and garbage all over the car from the recent storm we got, and I haven't been able to wash it yet because it was only a couple days ago, and the roads are still kind of gross. Um, but, obviously, check your windshield washer fluid. That seems to be actually quite good. Uh, check your fluid levels for your, let's see, coolant. Bottom line is cold. Looks like it's there. That's good. Brake fluid. Obviously, this is a newer car, so there better not be any damn problems with the brake fluid, but that level from the outside looks pretty good. I'll probably pop the lid off the air cleaner, make sure that's good. They've only, this car has only ever given us one problem it's a, obviously i told you before it's a 2017 it's got the 3.2 v6 um this is this is it we had a battery go bad it was the factory battery it, it must have dropped a cell or something because at some point i noticed that this thing has stop start so the engine will shut off on you oh there's a little easter egg there I didn't see that before. Jeep loves doing that. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't do the stop start. It said vehicle still charging or something and we were having problems getting it to start. Apparently it had dropped a cell. So I went to my local parts store there and picked one up, but I'm gonna start getting the oil changed in it while the engine still has a little bit of temperature in there. But again, when you're changing your oil, make sure that you have your, uh, your book out and you're checking all your fluid levels and capacities and such. And I think in this thing, it's like six quarts of oil or something. Yeah, it's exactly six quarts, the book told me. So that's easy. Just go buy yourself one of these five quart jugs and a regular one. I had a 2007 Volkswagen and I think the capacity level said like 5.8 quarts of oil or something. Just put six in it. What's it gonna do? You know, oh, you overfilled it by a quarter of a quart. It's not going to do anything. You probably end up burning that off by the time you get done uh, running and driving the thing until the next oil change anyway. So who cares? You know, it's not like you're putting a whole quart or two extra in it. It's a quarter of a quart. Who cares? Just round up. You know, half quarts you can do, but I, I, I don't do that kind of math in my head. I'm not measuring out 0.2 quarts, okay? Just throw the whole thing in there. It's fine. So, essentially what I'm going to do is change the oil. It's not due for spark plugs. I'm going to check every tire. We're going to rotate those, check tire pressures, check the brake linings, and then basically just clean the car. Now, the oil filter on these Chrysler, Jeep, whatever you want to call them, V6s, is a canister filter, and it's accessible through this little you know, port here that you just kind of crack sideways, take it off, and it's down here. Now you'll notice that I wrote in silver marker the size of the hex or socket or whatever that takes this canister off. I wrote it on there, it's a 24 millimeter, if you can see through the shadow. So I just grabbed like a 24 mil and a wrench and I just kind of knock the thing loose. Typically it doesn't even leak. Uh, but when you get one of these canister oil filters, it has like an O-ring that goes in the canister and all sorts of stuff. So always replace that when you get it. Now, obviously, I'm not the biggest fan of canister type filters because, you know, for what you buy, they uh, 
are incredibly expensive for what you get. So, see, I even bought the, the factory part. Um, yeah, get out of there. So here's your O-ring that goes on your canister. Here's your canister filter. And obviously, it'll only go in one way, you know. And the canister itself, or the filter itself, has an O-ring on it. And it uh, doesn't look like it needs one down here. I can't tell, but whatever. So, like I said, if it comes with it, use it. Now that the oil's changed, there's one more thing you got to do on these types of Jeeps, and that is resetting the oil light. Ah, there we go. Let's put it into not the wipes position. I'll close the door for this. So what you do is you hit the start button twice. It'll be on run. Then push the gas pedal down three times. Hit the key off, and I'm just going to open the door and close it again just because. And you can verify it by starting it. I know I'm in an enclosed place, but it's only gonna take five seconds. Oil life is now 100. And my license plate lights out. But you see it's 100. Yes, I did just shut it off so I wouldn't try to kill myself with carbon monoxide. I get it, thank you. So now that I've got the engine, oil's changed. We don't need to do spark plugs. I got the tires rotated. I did check the brakes, and I'll be honest, they could use a, a new brake pads and rotors pretty soon, but I, it's not enough to worry me because we're going to be on the highway for the vast majority of the trip. And, uh, I mean, if we were doing city driving for 1,500 miles, then I'd be concerned. But since we're doing highway driving and your foot's not touching the pedal, we're going to be fine for at least a few months. Um, I'm gonna check tire pressures, then we're gonna clean the inside of the car out, and then the last thing that we're gonna do is basically clean the outside of the car is the last thing that I'll do. I don't think I'm gonna show you guys all of that stuff because um, there's no sense in you watching me clean a car. I mean, how boring is that? Let's be fair. Um, I forgot to mention, if you're going on a long road trip, a good idea is to also check the pressure and uh, pressure in your spare tires and if you've got all your tools to change a tire just in case but I also take with me a flat repair kit and an air compressor just so I can fix the the regular tire just in case so that I don't have to run on a spare especially if I'm far away from home again all the fluid levels look good the engine oil is now changed spark plug is within intervals so we don't need to change those yet air filter looks good that's within intervals Tires are rotated, pressures are going to be set, and I got to tell you one thing. There's something really distracting about this car right now. Every time I go to the driver's side of it, it smells like dog poop. I think wherever my wife went today, she ran over a fresh dog turd and it sprayed under the car because... It smells like dog poop down the whole left side of this car. <laughs> if you live in an area where there is this much salt and garbage because of all the stupid snow and garbage and ice on the road, take it to a car wash regularly that does the underbody wash. And take your time when you drive through because it goes as long as you're driving over it. So just kind of crawl in. Don't just shoot over it. Crawl in, let it work the water in there. And if you have a pressure washer, I have one, get something that sprays up underneath the body. Like I have one of these water broom and undercarriage cleaners that I can take and roll it under the car and spray the underside of the car. Getting everything out from underneath the car is gonna stop a lot of corrosion and it's gonna stop a lot of headaches. 
especially with like brakes and backing plates and calipers and lines and all sorts of stuff. They do a really good job for cars nowadays to rust proof them. Like the way cars have been refined over the last 20 years is fantastic, but you still got to do it because you just can't leave anything to chance. So that's probably going to do it for this video because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me get hit by uh, falling brooms. Actually, no, that would be kind of funny. But I don't think you want to sit here and watch me vacuum out and clean garbage out of a, a Jeep. Um, this is just how I prepare a car for a road trip. And one of the last things that I do is clean it out. Now, why I clean a car out is, number one, it's just a genuinely nice place to be if it's nice and clean. If you got discarded tissues and cups and you know, just clutter and crap in your car. It just doesn't feel good. You know, you want to be, if you're going to be in a car for a long period of time, you want to be able to have that be kind of a sanctuary for you, you know? So, and especially if you're going to go south and do antiquing and all sorts of stuff like I am, you want a nice clean area that you can put a bunch of stuff that your wife is going to buy. So again, to sum it up, Always make sure everything is maintained on your car. Number one, it's going to last longer. And number two, you're going to have a lot less problems. And if you break down, at least it won't be your fault because you were negligent. So uh, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Please subscribe. And if you like what you see, please share it with your friends. I do appreciate it greatly. I am really trying to get you some better stuff than this. But hopefully this will help you out because I know it's going to help me out in the long run. So thank you all. I appreciate it.